now that distance is really milliseconds, okay? Because most of the decision making and decision quality occurs in micros milliseconds, not in days and weeks, not by proximity to the activity, not by proximity to, to any of those things. And so how do you start to think about this and how do you start to think about organizing and facilitating last meaningful human control in an AI world where you're trying to basically affect things, it takes you from thinking about the world in regional segments to thinking about the world in a global way. Because okay? the one thing we've been perfect at down through history is we've never guessed where the next bite's going to be. Okay? Never, never got that right. Okay? So you're always malpositioned if you, if you take it on as a regional. And so trying to get to a global scale, trying to integrate the physical and the non-physical, and do it in a way that our brains can perceptually handle, okay, is really tough. And I think when I, when I look at some of the things you're working on, they're really agnostic to where you are. They're really agnostic to what domain it's being affected in question now is, we had a good conversation about kind of vector space and stuff this morning. The question is, how do I give you confidence in what you can't see, hear, feel, touch, okay, but you rely on to keep, your, keep you alive, okay? How do I do that? And how do I represent what's happening in your models and what's happening in AI in a way that I can perceive in a timely fashion and actually register intent inside of that activity and adjust intent. And that's the, that's the challenge for us. And, you know, a lot of that is going to fall on what you all are working on. It, it, it's critically important to get that right. But it's also critically important to figure out where the human is, what the human contribution is going to be. And that's not a static thing. 